Hey, welcome to this week's episode on, on aerodynamics. This week we're going to be talking about aircraft propulsion, just a super interesting topic that you could study for years and years and years and years and still not know enough about. Um, but what's really interesting is um, on full scale sized aircraft and scale air sized aircraft that we get the chance to work on, model scales, uh, the propulsion systems actually work the same. They have, there's turbine, there's gas propeller driven, and then there's electric propeller driven. So we're going to go cover uh, what those different types are and how they work. So the type that you're most familiar thinking about is probably jet propulsion. That's what you think about uh, whenever you think of planes normally. And so uh, they do have small scale jet engines. We unfortunately probably won't get the chance to use them, but they're really cool and put out tons of thrust. So in case you're unfamiliar with the workings of a jet, jet engine, there are three sections that are included in it. And so this is the compressor section, and you have the combustion chamber, and then you have the turbine section. And so the general principle that's at work here is that in order to burn fuel, you need oxygen. We get oxygen out of the air, and the more air that you have, the more uh, the fuel is going to combust. And the more combust, the more pressure it creates, that's the higher velocity of air that you can expel, expel at the back. And so as air comes in through the front of your engine, it flows into the combustion chamber where it is ignited. And so that air then rushes out the back because there's an excess of energy that re that's resulting in an air velocity. And as it goes out the back, it spins these turbines. And as these turbines spin, they're all connected on the same shaft. And so the faster these turbines spin, the faster that your compressor will spin. And as your compressor spins, it's going to pull in more air. And this is a cyclical process. So you bring in more air because your compressor is spinning faster, which allows you to combust hotter and faster, which allows your turbines to spin faster, which in turn allows your compressor to spin faster, which gives you more combustion, which allows this to spin faster, and so then everything spins up faster and faster. You're probably familiar with the sound of a jet engine starting. That is the process that's going on here. And eventually, you come to a, a, a thermal equilibrium where you can't, really make your combustion, you can't really combust hotter, and so then you can't turn faster, and you can't bring in more air, so you kind of reach an equilibrium until you add more fuel or less fuel, and so that's how it's controlled. And so the, the thrust in a jet engine of this sort comes from this rush of air out here. In propulsion, you can push a small amount of air really fast, or you can push a large amount of air slower. And so this is what work goes into deciding what type of jet engine you're going to, going to use on your airframe. This type of jet engine where you solely have you know, your compressor, combustion, and turbine, pushes a, lot, a little bit of air really fast out the back, and that allows your aircraft to be propelled very fast through the air. Um, however, that's not very efficient. And so what people will do, or what they've done, is they add an additional, tur what's called a turbofan section up here. And so they add a fan connected here, and this fan is spun also by the turbine. So as your jet engine picks up speed, so is this fan. But this fan's job is to push a lot of air around the engine at a slower speed than it's coming back out of the engine, but enough speed to produce still a great amount of thrust. So this configuration is called a turbofan jet engine. And this is what you see on most of your commercial airliners nowadays, because it allows you to achieve high speeds approaching Mach 1, but it is also very efficient because you have this air that is bypassing the uh, engine. And as jet engines have progressed, engines have increasingly in become more and more high bypass engines, which means that more air is going around the turbine itself than is going through it. This is determined by a bypass ratio, and the higher this ratio is, typically the more efficient the engine is. And so through the 80s and 90s, people would achieve bypass ratios in the 30s to 40s. In the 2000s, we started getting uh, up in the 60s and 70s, uh, but the crowning jewel so far has been the GE 9115B high bypass jet engine that's on the 777-300ER that has a whopping bypass ratio in the 90s. And so that means for every one part of air that goes through that engine, 
that for every one part of air that goes through the actual turbine and jet engine portion of the aircraft, 90 times more air goes around it and pushes air uh, to create thrust. The third type of jet engine propulsion is called a turboprop, and it's similar to the turbofan, except instead of having this fan on top and the air going around the engine, a turboprop takes full advantage of the power go being propelled by the turbines, and there's very, very little that actually goes out the back. Instead, this is expelled as exhaust, And the power from the shaft is typically transferred into an en from an enclosure into just one very large propeller. And so typically on commercial prop propeller driven aircraft, this is the mechanism that's at work there. It's actually still a jet engine behind it, just it's turning a propeller instead of a fan or more jet engine. This is the most efficient setup for a jet engine, although it does not quite achieve the same speeds as does a turbofan or just a turbojet, regular jet engine. Another type of propulsion for aircraft that you're probably very familiar with is just uh, gas engine propulsion, uh, where you have a combustion engine that takes in liquid fuel, and a similar method to a car, uses, transfers that power, that energy, through pistons and do a crankshaft that turns a propeller. And so the workings of a system like this, where you have a propeller that's being turned, are pretty straightforward. However, even in this category, there are two different types. One is going to be a throttle-controlled aircraft. That means the more throttle you put in, it's just direct drive through the shaft increases the speed of the propeller. And increasing the speed of the propeller, you then get more air being pushed and more thrust. The second type, instead of increasing the speed, the propeller turns at a constant velocity, omega, and the way that throttle or thrust is increased or decreased is actually by changing the pitch. As the pitch, which is kind of the, the amount of air that a propeller can push, is changed, it will push more or less air, but the propeller will actually spin still at the same speed. And so this is actually the most common way of controlling a propeller-driven aircraft nowadays. The third type of propulsion is electric propulsion. In the modern days, this is typically done using a brushless motor. Those are the most efficient kinds that we have. Brushless motors work using electromagnets, and typically you have three poles that go into it. You have a magnet here and another magnet that's attached to a rotational shaft right here, and this is an electromagnet. So if this magnet is off and these magnets are separated by a distance, whenever you turn this magnet on, it's going to pull that magnet towards it. And so if you can make an engine where you pull it towards it and then all of a sudden power goes off and on another magnet over here, that one turns on, and over here, that one turns on, and over here, that one turns on. And so as the shaft, or this is called the stator, as the stator rotates, so does the magnetic fields around it, and it will pull the stator in circles. In addition to brushless motors, there are also brushed motors. You don't see these as much nowadays because they're a little bit less efficient. And they work in the same way, uh, but instead of having an electronic component that determines the speed of the electric field rotating, it's actually determined by the position of the shaft itself. On the shaft, you're going to have a metal plate that's able to conduct electricity and coming, completing the circuit from the stationary magnets, the, the electromagnets, is going to be a brush. And so as this rotates, that piece of metal is going to touch that brush. And so you can align your circuit so that every time that brush touches, the electromagnet turns on and it's going to pull it. And then that piece of metal is going to be in a new place, so it can turn on a different circuit, which is going to pull it again. And so this is less efficient for two reasons. One, you have a mechanical linkage that's actually physically connected that creates friction and other uh, and degrades the motor over time. Um, the second of that is it's difficult to create a system where you have many electromagnets. You can only have so much room on that shaft. And with a brushless setup, you can have really as many as you want as long as they're controlled in a like manner.
Since for our applications we use brushless motors quite often, in the next event, in the advanced video we're going to talk about how to choose a motor prop combination um, and what makes these more powerful and how to optimize them.